I'm talking about how it can contribute to a more innovative Europe. It's a question of form and content. In terms of form, the Commission proposal is just one article in the legislative part which really doesn't do more than note what's in the annex on the question of innovation. What I wanted to do was to put among the article some key strategic points which would allow us to move the agenda forward. And I wanted it in the article so we can stress our main desires as far as innovation and technology are concerned, although, of course, we could put other elements into the annex if we want to pursue the Commission model. Basically, what the report's saying is that up to now, we haven't had an institute that's been any more different from the three we've already got going, ITC, Energy and Climate Change. Now we've got a Commission proposal, which I back, of increasing the agenda, sorry, the budget up to 3.2 billion euros. And we want to support this and want one institute and not just the three bodies I mentioned together lumped together. There are also other issues that we need to address. The EIT is the only body which would allow us effectively to link together industry, academia and research. The EIT is the one which would give us the best return. We've got 25% for public financing, 75% from the private sector. That would give us the best leverage effect, which is what we want. It's also important under the present context to be able to get the European economy moving again. And having said that, I would say that adding to the communities of innovation and knowledge, having the institute which would address these points, we need to remember though that priority needs to be given to training. We need in fact a specific program of, uh, of research scholarships linked of course to the overall industrial picture but a EIT focused financing program as well as well as the scholarships making sure that young scientists can work with EIT related programs and make sure that we can guarantee some level of employability for these people when their scholarships expire. Obviously, the creation of new jobs and the combating of unemployment are crucial aspects for Europe. Further, we should strengthen SME participation. This is one of the things which should be our highest priority. Another point... We need to look very carefully and actually have measures and strategies aimed that the, the units or the clusters where these innovation bodies work should be spread out more fairly and evenly throughout Europe. Not just having them focused in a small number of countries and a small number of areas. I know we're only at the beginning of that process but we really should think about widening this geographically. Now on to my final point, Mr Chairman. Up to now, the EIT has really scarcely made an impact at all, mainly because I think it's lacked certain elements for to become the kind of thing we wanted it to be. The poll for excellence and innovation and technology at a European level. So I agree with what's been said in the reports on Horizon 2020. We need infrastructures. We need infrastructures for the EIT as well. So I propose that we have an article which calls on the Commission and the EIT to look into the possibility of using Strasbourg in terms of its headquarters. And let me explain what I mean by that. There's a very simple reason for that. Today... 
Strasbourg is seen more as a problem by our citizens than as a solution. I see the twen Horizon 2020 and the EIT as genuinely European programmes which could chime in with the whole European idea of bringing us together and providing added value. So, with the increase in the budget and the need to find a real bond home for the Institute, I think we could make Strasbourg into something very positive. There's fine buildings in Strasbourg, it's a lovely city, and, uh, however, there is the negative in image of it as far as our citizens are concerned. If we could make Strasbourg a capital of innovation and knowledge, we wouldn't just be doing a big thing for Europe, but we'd be doing a thing for our citizens and indeed the citizens of Strasbourg. It's impossible for citizens to understand today that we have this enormous building that we use only three and a half days per month. We've made mistakes about this in the past. We need to look for the future now. That's why I've made that proposal so that for the future we would provide a real image, a real kind of European mark, which would make an impact throughout Europe, and that's the kind of proposal we should make, even if it means thinking some of the things that are difficult and things that are important as far as a future of knowledge, a Europe of knowledge and innovation is concerned. That's why... I've made this proposal because I want to back innovation and technology in Europe. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's a challenge we need to meet. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I let you run on, uh, not least because I'm very sympathetic to the suggestion you're making, as long as it means we don't have to go to Strasbourg any longer. Um, uh, my French colleagues will listen carefully to that observation. Um,